Hey guys and welcome back to another Geek Time and this week I will be reviewing the PS5 Digital Edition as well as all of the official PlayStation 5 accessories that came out on release of the console. We've got quite a lot to get through so if you're just interested in listening to the review of a particular accessory then I've added the timestamps to the description below and on the screen now so you can jump to the part that you want to. If you're new to the channel, hello and welcome. We do geeky videos every Monday and Disney Plus videos on Wednesdays with lots of other random video drops throughout the month such as Doctor Who reviews, game and film reviews, cosplay music videos and so much more. So please consider hitting that subscription button and the notification bell to keep up to date. But as I said, we have lots to get through, so let's get into it. Firstly, let's look into the PS5 Digital itself and my review of the console. I have been using the PS5 for over a week now so didn't want to give a review after just a couple of days because I wanted a longer experience with it. Also I won't be going through what the PS5 comes with as I did do a live stream of the unboxing and first look reactions which I will leave a link in the description and at the end of the video and in the corner now. Well I must admit that I really do love the PS5 at the moment. Visually the console in my opinion is stunning and the digital version does look better as it does not have disk drive on it. I love the fact that it has three USB 3 ports, one on the front and two on the back as well as a USB-C port on the front. The ports on the back have allowed me to put the HD camera and the 3D Pulse wireless module into the PS5 without sticking out of the front to make it look ugly. You don't have to do it like this but I prefer it in my opinion. You can install an external hard drive too which can use any of these ports. I am very, very, very impressed with the loading times of the apps and games as well as startup. Games such as Spider-Man Miles Morales and Astro's Playroom have virtually instant loading and whilst you're playing the game you don't even notice them loading. Games such as Bug Snacks, however do have a small loading times between areas but these are no more than a few seconds but is noticeable compared to others. Also I have tested out Fallout 76 on the PS5 which is an online multiplayer which I bought on the PS4. The load screens on this also have greatly improved as I counted about 10 seconds for a load screen when fast travelling which usually took around about half a minute so that is great. The graphics haven't really improved, I noticed they were a bit better but that was because I was using a 4K TV instead of a full HD. The new create options are easy to use and give you slight more options than that of the PS4. Two of which that spring immediately to mind to me when recording. You have a timer on the top of the screen that you can see whilst recording to keep track of how long you have been recording for. And also when uploading your video to YouTube then you can select private, unlisted or publish instead of it publishing as soon as it's uploaded. When broadcasting you can choose to have the chat or subscribe account pop up but unlike the PS4 they do not stay on the screen but disappear after a few seconds which is great for viewers as they get to see more gameplay. On the PS4 it makes the gameplay smaller to accommodate for the chat room on the right. However with the PS5 if you are focusing on the game you could miss the message but I always have the chat room open on a device anyways so I can see messages at all times. Let's talk about the PS5 Digital's operating volume now. If you're expecting a console to be completely silent and I suggest getting board games as you will always have some noise from a machine. Saying that the PS5 Digital is very quiet. The only sound I can hear on it is a quiet operating noise. Due to it not having a disk drive you do not get the disk drive sound either. The new user interface and home screens for the PS5 does take some getting used to as they have a section just for games and then have a section for media which will be where all the streaming services are. Friends are now seen in the game base section which you have to access by pressing the PS button on the controller and scroll across. I'm not saying I don't like the new interface but it does take some getting used to but I do not like the new party chat system that they have now on PS4 and PS5. You have to make a group up and only use that if you want to speak to that one person or group of people but if you just want to speak to one of them then you will need to make a new group. How it was before is you could just set up a party chat and invite who you wanted. Messages were also separate but now are combined with these groups. But that's just a minor thing to complain about. You do have to remember that if you don't have your mic set to be muted at default then your controller is always live. So if you want to save a clip of gameplay or go to a multiplayer game remember that your microphone will still be live and will hear everything. You can change this in the settings or even select the mute on the controller or headset. 
Finally, I did have one major crash two days after having my PS5. I was recording a video of gameplay on Spider-Man Miles Morales, and after a quick cutscene, my controller froze. I could not use any of the buttons, but the audio and visual were still going. I couldn't use any buttons, but the audio and visual was still going. I tried to turn on my other PS5 controller to see if I could turn the other one off, but this one also was not allowing me to do anything. I tried pressing the power button on the PS5 to turn it off. It didn't work, so I tried holding it down, but it still didn't work. In the end, I had to turn the power off at the wall, which I really didn't want to do, but had no other choice. When loading back up, it did do a system repair and everything was working after that. I checked to see if the game recording saved, but it did not, so I lost that entire video. So that's just a warning to everyone out there that these things may happen. I have had two other crashes a week later. One did exactly the same, but this time I could turn it off by the power button and it did its repair and was fine. The other time it just booted me from the game and asked to send a crash report. So each time it has gotten better. So that's fine with me. Also, all three of these crashes have been with Spider-Man Miles Morales. But that is my review of the PS5 Digital Edition. Overall, I am very pleased of how it looks, sounds and performs. My only issue with it will be the PlayStation Store not having all PS5 titles on there for pre-order, but you can pre-order them on PS4. One of these I have in mind is Cyberpunk 2077. I have attempted to contact both PlayStation and CD Projekt Red about this, but they have not replied to me. But I have pre-ordered it anyways, so I'll let you know what version I do end up with getting on release, as I will be having a live stream on the gaming channel for it. Let's move on to the accessories. But if you would rather watch the unboxing of the PS5 video, then skip to the end and click on the video there. If you're ending the video here, then thank you very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe. But if you're continuing, then let's move on. First accessory we will look at is the DualSense controller, which is the main controller for the PS5. You do indeed get one in the box with the PS5, but I did order a spare one for uninterrupted wireless gaming. I always like to have a spare and run the battery right down before recharging to help with battery life. There are many new features on the DualSense than that of the DualShock 4, so let's have a look at those first. One of the main questions I get asked about is about the haptic feedback, and is it just a gimmick? Now to answer that would be depending on what game you are playing. For Astro's Playroom, I think everything is dialed to maximum for it, as you can really feel everything from changing surfaces when running, or from rain or hailstones, so that game is just to showcase what it can do. However, on Bug Snacks, it does seem very gimmicky as it doesn't really feel like what you're walking on, etc. So I don't feel it adds to the game at all. But then on games like Spider-Man Miles Morales, the use of it is so subtle, you can't really tell that it's there, but at the same time adds to the immersive gameplay, which is what the haptic feedback is supposed to do. I think the real difference you will get for haptic feedback would be racing games knowing that you're on tarmac or off-road. You can change the strength of the haptic feedback as they do recommend not using it if you suffer from things such as arthritis. Also if you're using the mic on the controller then it automatically changes to lower strength but can change this. Next most talked about feature is the adaptive triggers. Now these I really do love as it improves the gameplay and makes it a little more realistic. Astro's Playroom showcases the different uses of this from pulling a bowstring to climbing a mountain. Now the latter did actually make my fingers ache after a while, so just watch that really. But the climbing part of Astro's Playroom, you need to do some light grab of a ledge which is made far easier due to the tension on the triggers. In Spider-Man, you can feel the different pulls of the web from swinging or yanking things which is great. I cannot wait for Horizon Forbidden West to test out this even more. Next up is the microphone on the controller, which is built in. As I said earlier in the video, this is set to default always on, but you can change this in the settings, so just be aware of that. You can also use the mute button on the controller, which will then turn orange. Let's flip over to some gameplay of Astro's Playroom that I recorded for you to see the quality of the microphone. So this is the microphone on the controller. Um, I've just got it at about waist height, so as you would normally be playing it um, so what do you think of the audio for that I can bring it up to more chest height so it is like you're leaning backwards and you're resting it um, on your chest as you're playing 
this is what the following would be like then. It's not the clearest, but we didn't think it would be. Um, it does have a mute button, which uh, when you press it, it glows orange. And it just, um, I'm not too sure whether it'll show up on the screen, but it'll appear on the top right hand corner with a mute button. And that is that. So that is the microphone on there. As you can tell, the microphone is not great quality at all. So I don't know what the real point of having one on the controller is. If you want to speak to friends, then I recommend investing in a headset, which you can pick up for reasonable prices. In the 3D Pulse headset review section, I do give you a comparison between the headset and the controller. So stick around for that. But Astro's Playroom uses the microphone for certain tasks such as blowing into it, so maybe others will need you to talk into the game. However, on Astro's Playroom, I did have the mic muted at one point when coming up to the blowing the windmill bit, and it automatically done it for me. When initially connecting the DualSense, much like the DualShock 4, you need to connect the controller via the USB lead, provided and press the PS button, and you are then linked. You can then unplug the USB and continue wirelessly. You can use this as a means of charging too, and it will charge when the PS5 is on rest mode, as long as you have it on the correct setting. You also have all the other features on the DualShock, such as the touchpad, motion control, and a speaker where gameplay can come from. But with the speaker, when you're using the controller as a microphone, your friends come through on the speaker on the controller too, but the quality is very bad and quiet too. I won't show you an example, but that is my opinion and think it's best to use a headset. Battery life on the controller in actuality is around 10 hours of gameplay at an estimate, though it depends on what game you are playing. Astro's Playroom uses more of the features, so it does drain the battery a little more than, say, that of Bug Snacks, which doesn't really use the features on there, so it's a bit difficult to gauge the battery life, really. Now let's take a look at the 3D Pulse headset. Firstly, the audio quality of the earphones is amazing. The right balance of bass and treble and clear sounding also. There are several features on the headset, but first let's take a look at the microphone quality and compare it with the mic on the controller. I'm just using the microphone on the 3D Pulse now and as you can tell it's not the best really uh, I just it's not the same it's not very clear I do sound quite tinny I think um, and muffled um, so what I'm going to do I'm also going to change it now because there's a little control on there that you can change it from party chat audio to game audio so let's um, do it more party chat so this is full um, microphone level now than game level. Um, so just have a little see what you guys think of that. Um, the actual game itself is very quiet, so I can't really hear um, a lot of, of the things. Like I can hear it, but it's not major. Let's go the other way now. Okay, so that is now on full game volume. So what is the volume like now on the uh, the microphone? It's probably gonna be a lot quieter, but let's just put it back to balanced. So there you go, so now that is um, on 50-50. There's also a button on here that says um, monitor. So you can monitor your audio, but I can't hear myself at all. Um, so that must be a little bit weird um, on there also you can click on them there's a mute button so you can click the mute but that is that so i'm just going to show you a bit of a comparison now between this microphone and the microphone on the controller so this is the 3d pulse and i'm just going to turn this off now and you can hear it then on the controller okay and here is the microphone on the controller so it is a about, uh, it's about six inches away from my face now, so if I'm going to put it down towards my waist, here is it at waist height, um, and I'm talking quite normal, um, so what do you think on the audio on that? I'm going to go listen back to this in a few moments anyway, and then I'll give my full review of that then. But um, this is now really close, so <laughs> that's a different loudness again, probably. But um, Let's just see which is clearer, uh, but I really think that they need to put a physical microphone on the 3D headset and not just a little pin microphone in the headset itself. 
As you can tell, the microphone on the headset is a lot better than the one on the controller, but to me, it still isn't amazing quality. My friends do say I sound clearer, but a little distant, and have to increase the microphone volume for it to sound less distant. But you can get far worse microphones too. Also, the control for gameplay to voice chat is not the mix of your video recording or broadcasting. It is just for the headphones, so you can hear either more of the game or more of your party chat in the headphones. If you have it on balance, then the game audio will not be at the maximum, just to let you know. With the monitor button on the headset, you are supposed to be able to hear your own voice as you speak, but I have selected that on different games and on party chat with someone, and I cannot hear it, so I am a little stumped on that one. When you click the mute on the headset, the orange mute light does appear on the controller, which is also a good indicator that it is muted. The headset does come with a jack to jack lead, which means you can use it on the PS4 or other consoles, or into your phone or computer, and I have used this. It sounds just as good, and you can use this with your PSVR headset by just plugging in the audio jack. You can only use the headset wirelessly if you have the USB module, but the instructions do say you can plug this into a computer too. The battery life when using wirelessly is actually very long. I have only had to charge it back up once in a week, and I have used it probably for about 20 or more hours before needing to charge it. If you are using it with the jack to jack then you do not need to turn it on and will not use battery power. With the five audio profiles, we thought they would put you through a test to see which one is best for you when setting up, but it isn't. You have to go into the settings and select the profile which is best for you. It plays a sound and you go through the profiles to see where the centre of your ear is. That is all it does, selecting the height of your ear. Now as for the 3D part of it, I am yet to experience any more than just a very good surround sound. PlayStation stated you would be able to pinpoint exactly where the sound comes from around you, but so far from the games I've played, it just gives you a better surround sound, more than exact pinpoint, but that might just be my ears. However, saying that, it does also depend on the games, as Bug Snacks does not even have surround sound, it is just stereo sound. Overall, I am very happy with the 3D Pulse headset and does help with the immersion when combined with the DualSense. Is it worth £90? I wouldn't think so, but more £60. If the microphone was better quality, then I would say the 90 range is a good price. Now just a quick review of the DualSense charging dock. It is a very simple piece of kit, effective too. You can easily and comfortably rest a DualSense onto it and it will charge up. The light bar on the controller will pulse orange and then stop when it is fully charged. I'm not sure if the charging stops once it is fully charged or whether the power keeps going into it, so I tend to unplug the charger once it is done, but you don't need to do this. Also, it is a mains plug and not a USB, so you don't have another USB to plug into the PS5, which is great in my opinion. Also, because it is the official charger, then you don't have to worry about it damaging the battery life. It fits two controllers comfortably, and to be honest, I am glad I got it, so I can just pop it down to charge and looks great as a stand too. The HD camera is decent quality compared to previous cameras, but is essentially just a webcam. You can see the quality of it in my first livestream of Miles Morales on our gaming channel, and you can see a clip of it here. You can set the opacity of it as well as different filters exactly like on the PS4, as well as the shape of the cutout. I have set it to hex, but you can also have chroma key, which removes the background. But as my background is black, then I didn't choose this, but I will use my green screen with it at some point. This is the smallest you can set the image to though, so I do recommend using the opacity settings. The camera is easy to install, with the clip either spreading out to go on top of the TV or collapsing to add as a stand for under a TV. The connection into the PS5 is also a USB 3 connection, so much better than the unique connection the PS4 camera had. I do believe you can connect the HD camera up to a laptop so you can use it as a webcam, but I am yes to test this out, but might do that over the Christmas period. We all know this camera is set up for the PSVR 2 as it is not compatible with the current PSVR. However, I want this camera to be more than just a webcam for gaming. It is a lot of money just for what it is, and with the apps that you can get on consoles now, I want to be able to integrate it into more of them. For example, I would love to see Facebook Portal, Skype, Zoom, Discord or other apps appear on the PS5 so you can use your PS5 HD camera to do video chats with friends and family or even business calls. 
To me, this would complete the PS5 as a main entertainment system. Finally, we have the Media Remote, which is a nice touch to finish off the PS5. You can control your TV with the remote as well, being able to turn it on and off and adjust the volume. The remote does have hotkeys for Netflix, Disney+, YouTube and Spotify. Once you sign into these apps, it will take you directly to the apps for you to watch. You can also use the remote to watch back your gameplay saves too and navigate the PS5 interface. When you use the media remote to turn the PS5 on, it goes directly to the media section of the PS5, whereas the controller takes you to the game section, which is very handy. To me, you don't really need the media remote, but if you are like me and lazy about turning on and off the controller to save battery, then it is great. And also, you don't need to have your TV remote to hand if using this. Maybe a tiny bit more for what I would say would be the perfect price, but it does finish off the full entertainment package. And that is it for my review of the PS5 Digital Edition and the PS5 Accessories. I hope this has given you a bit of insight into the console and the items to help you make a decision on if you will get one or not. If you have any questions then feel free to comment down below and we will get back to you as soon as we can and try to get you that information. Don't forget to click that subscribe button for more information on PS5 as starting in December we will be releasing PS5 update videos every first Monday of the month telling you what is new, what's coming up, any rumours and things like that. We have many other videos too throughout the month, so if you're a big geek like us, then we will give you lots more geeky information. If you'd like to support our channel, then please feel free to check out our tipping website, which is displayed on the screen now and in the description. This is to tip us the small price of a coffee. If you'd like to become one of our patrons, you can visit patreon.com forward slash skybotfilm and join us there. Just to let you know that the reward tiers are not available until the official launch in spring 2021. But you can still join us for the support here for £1 or $1 a month and we will be dropping little treats here and there. Other ways to support the channel is to simply share this video as it really does help us out and we greatly appreciate it too. As always, pop a comment down and let's get chatting as we do love speaking to you. That is all we got this week, but until next time...